Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Zenith DeFi Classic Reserve de Marche. You can see this stainless steel 2000s DeFi Diver on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during the video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop and naturally complete pricing details for this DeFi Classic with Power Reserve. Now the watch on my wrist represents everything that was right with the Terry Natoff years of the 2000s. The man was simultaneously the president, CEO, and lead designer for Zenith. And while not everything he tried worked out, some of what he attempted became timeless, successful, and quite frankly, looks better now than it did back then. And this Zenith DeFi Classic certainly falls into that category. One thing you can't deny about the Natoff watches is that a ton of money was spent on them. Cases, bracelets, and movements. Almost all the high horology calibers launched in the last decade by Zenith actually had their beginnings with Nataf's budgeting and his go-ahead. So this watch represents all the money that was put into cases and bracelets and the notion that you could make a big watch fit a small wrist. Alongside Hublot, no one did that better than Zenith during this era. So the watch is 43 millimeters across the round of the case, not including the crown, and you'll note the crown has no guards, so it's easy to manipulate. The watch is surprisingly thin. 15.2 millimeters, it's that slim because of the ultra-thin elite base caliber within. From lug to lug, the end links, which are solid, are so tightly downturned and tucked that the 50 millimeter lug to lug measurement across the wrist really is the measurement horizontally. So 50 millimeters across the wrist for a 43, that's impressive. And you can see on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, the bracelet actually flares out a little bit because my wrist is pushing it out. You could wear this watch on a smaller wrist. I would even say you could wear this watch on a wrist as small as 14 and a half centimeters in circumference with perfect comfort and security. Like I said, with Nataf, money was spent on cases, on calibers, and on bracelets. And you can see the substance here. First, the differential finish is phenomenal. The hobnail down the center is inventive and different. No mere polishing here. The contrast is achieved with a completely different embossed texture. You can see there's a vertical satin finish to the flying and a horizontal satin finish across the outer links. There's that hobnail sort of diamond plate design in miniature down the center, and all of the sizing is done with screws, not with pin sleeves or spring bars. The clasps of the Nataf era are beautiful, bold, and tough. Frankly, they're a little bit oversized and over-engineered, even in this diving application. You can see that it's nicely executed with a contrasting polish and satin finish, and the swing arms themselves are chunky and close with a positive snick and a snap. It's actually quite seamless and low in profile. Now you'll also note that on the underside, there are plenty of channels to allow the wrist to aerate and breathe on a hot day. The channel's particularly dramatic between the intermediate links of the center, with scalloped portions between the individual shoulder links, as well as the intermediates to prevent the pinching of skin or the pulling of hair. The case is simple but imposing. Satin finished on its flanks, there's a transitional bevel that's hairline polished and actually tapers and thins out around the mid case and the hairline expands to a flare on the opposite side. You'll also note that the lugs are surprisingly complex where they terminate as there is a multifaceted point with both satin and polished finish that breaks up the rather simple lines of the case right where they terminate. This is unexpected and it speaks to an impressive attention to detail. The bezel, likewise, perhaps a little bit too much detail. One could say that the bezel is the most extreme and perhaps only overwrought element of the watch's design. It's not a true diving bezel because there is no luminescent pearl or marker, although you have a broad panoply of shapes and relief and raised and knurled components. You can actually see that the the recesses of the case flank are so large that you could easily manipulate this crown when your hands are wet, sweaty, or gloved. And ultimately, you can use it as most use their diving bezels to simply align a reference point. In this case, we may as well just take the reference of 60, align it with the minute hand, and now we've got an impromptu one to 60 minute countdown, depending on how large an interval we want to time. So you have that functionality. The bezel also has a wonderfully chunky detent. Uh, 
maybe chunky isn't the right word, but crisp, sharp, you hear it and you feel it, and both distinctively. The dial is surprisingly detailed, and this angle gives you the best sense of just how detailed it is, as there's a sort of inverse hobnail pattern embossed into it. It's all black, with a black matte finish to reduce glare. You can see that the hands are beautifully elongated, graceful, and skeletonized. They do have a small triangle of Luminova at their, their termination point. The centers, though, are fully skeletonized to allow easy access to, for instance, the Reserve de Marche or the Sub Seconds at 9 o'clock. Now, there is an inverse Cyclops Eye magnifier. Think Royal Oak Offshore here. The inverse Cyclops Eye not marring the profile of the crystal, nor turning into a knockoff hazard that might be chipped off by perhaps indecent haste, as a Rolex Cyclops eye might be. You'll also note that all of the numerals and the faceted indices are diamond polished, so as I stated earlier, money was spent on these watches, and with the appliques so nicely executed on the dial, you can see where the money was spent. A reserve to Marsh indicator, you can wind the watch, and because the 50 hour power reserve is quite ample. You only need to wind the watch every other day, solidly more than the 38 to 42 hours that's standard in the automatic watch class, but it is a fun watch to wind manually, both because access to the oversized crown is so simple without the crown guards, and because one of the best kept secrets in high horology, the elite movement actually winds wonderfully. For an automatic, it feels as though it were designed for manual winding, so satisfying in an unexpected way. Also unexpected is that on a 300 meter diver, or diver style I should say, you actually have a display case back. So you can see the Elite Caliber 685 with its gorgeous Clou de Paris impression on the winding mass, the blackened balance cock, an unusual treatment, circular Cote de Genève across the bridges, and a tight and even engine turned perlage across the base plate. Now it does feature a 28,800 vibration per hour beat rate, the 50 hour power reserve. It does feature both stop seconds and an uncommon date functionality, which means this is one of the few dates I know of that you can actually quick set in both directions to get to the appropriate date more quickly if it might be simpler to cycle forward or backwards rather than cycling around completely in the opposite direction. The watch features an efficient bi-directional winding operation, so there's very little audible or physical sense that the watch is winding itself. It winds smooth bi-directionally like a Rolex. This is a timepiece that offers a lot of substance for the money. In the hand, eyes closed, you might say Rolex Deep Sea. You might say Royal Oak Offshore on a bracelet. It has that kind of solidity to it. There's a quality that is latent in this watch and many of the other Natafira watches that has been entirely overlooked by collectors of our era. These are current in my opinion, some of the best kept secrets on the market, both for their refinement and for their timeless solidity. Because ultimately, luxury is about the intangibles, which is the way the watch makes you feel, and the tangible, which is often how the watch physically feels. This watch, and I can tell you from personal experience, succeeds on both counts. See it on our website.